day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. Can you manifest God? Good question. When I'm out dealing with activism and talking to believers for many, many years, one of my favorite questions for them is, can you manifest God? A God who does not manifest in reality is indistinguishable from a God that does not exist. I hear a lot of talk. I hear a lot of conjecture when I go in and talk to believers, whether it's in the church or whether it's out in the streets. A lot of talk, but I'm kind of a guy of action. I want to see some action. I want to see this demonstrated so that if it is true, I can actually see it. That's called empirical evidence. Um, now, I'm going to read from the Bible because you know I like to do that. And this is the belief system of Christianity. So let's go right to it. Let's see what it says. Do they just talk or do they actually manifest this belief system into reality? In the Gospel of John, this is a good one. I used to use this quite often when I was a young preacher. Jesus allegedly said, I say to you, now who's the you? He who believes in me. So this message Jesus allegedly said and spoke is for every believer who follows Jesus. In other words, a Christian. So he who believes in me, the works that I do. Notice he didn't say the words. Notice he didn't say debate and dialogue. He said the works, that's called action, that I do, he or she, will do also. Wow, that's a big meat to ball of there. That's a lot to take. According to the Bible, if you're a believer, you're going to have to do a lot more than just talk. You're going to have to give some action. He said you're going to do the same miracles, the same work, the same manifestation of the power of this supernatural God, Jesus said, the same things that I did, you as believers shall do. And not only that, he says something even more powerful. And greater words? No. Greater works and manifestations and power than these he or she will do because I go to the Father. That's a lot to handle there. It's not just words. It's not just talk. It's actually doing something, some action. And then he went on to say, whatever you ask in my name, this is another biggie, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, so that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I've asked believers all the time through years now, can you do this? Can you manifest it? Uh, no, I didn't think you could. It happens all the time. Now, I'm going to take you to the book of Acts uh, of the Apostles. And this book in the Bible is allegedly about all the signs and the wonders that human beings like you and I allegedly did about 2,000 years ago after the Holy Spirit of God in Acts chapter 2 came upon the believers for them to go out and do, not just talk, to manifest God in reality. Let's see what happened amongst these believers. In Acts chapter 2 verse 43, oh I love this right here. Here we have the apostles being filled with the Holy Spirit. And in verse 33, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. They were in awe. I would be in awe if I saw something. And many wonders and signs were taking place through who? The apostles. These guys were human beings obeying what their Lord and Savior said in John chapter 14. You're going to do what I did and even greater. Let's move along. Chapter 3, healing the lame beggar. Here we have Peter and John, two of the top three disciples of the inner circle of Jesus, going to the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, going to the prayer meeting to the church. And on their way, they see a, a beggar, a lame beggar. We see people like that all the time. We stop and give them food. That's what we do. So the story goes on that Peter and John walked by, and Peter said these very famous words. In fact, I remember the little songs we used to sing in church as a child and when I was a preacher. Silver and gold have I not 
to give you, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Let's see what this story says. Let's see if they just talked or actually manifested God. Peter said, I don't possess silver or gold, but what I do have. Interesting, when we go out, we actually give food and clothing. We don't just talk. We actually do it. And he said, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk, a miracle, woohoo, a real sign and a demonstration and manifestation of, in reality, of this God. And verse 7, it says, and seizing him, who? The poor crippled man. Seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up and immediately, wow, a miracle, a demonstration. His feet and ankles were strengthened. Wow. I'd be in awe too if I saw something like that. Verse 8, with a leap, he stood upright. He began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. That was a song we used to sing. So here we have all these words, words, words. Talk. Let's see some action. Verse 9, all the people saw. Interesting. All the people did what? They heard the words of Peter and John? No, they saw a supernatural manifestation in reality of this God they worship, a supernatural deity. It said they were all filled with wonder and they saw him. Who's him? The beggar. He was lame. They saw him walking and praising God and they were talking about him as being the one who used to sit at the temple and beg alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So we have supernatural demonstrations allegedly written down in this book called the Bible. I ask believers all the time. I've been doing it for so long now, so many years. Can you manifest this? No, I didn't think so. I ask you all the time. I think it would be wonderful if you could. So I'm going to move on to one more. This one, I would say, for the, the best for last. Let's go back and talk about what Jesus told Doubting Thomas. And before I do that, I don't want to forget to mention this. There is a beggar, and he's lame. We're talking reality now. He lives under a bridge in South Austin, not far from where Christine and I live. And after I and my friends, activist friends, every Saturday morning go out and feed homeless people downtown Austin, we go out and perform our atheist activism. Yes, we go out and talk to people and normalize atheism. And if I have any remaining food in my vehicle, I stop off going home on Saturday afternoon. And there is a small colony, and forgive me if I've mentioned this in one of my other episodes. I've had so many episodes I forget. <laughs> if I've even mentioned this before, so I'm going to say it again. And so I stop off, and there is a lame beggar, a homeless man in his 60s or 70s, who is a double amputee. Pretty hard stuff. My question is, where's God, right? And he lives in a box. He has a wheelchair to get around. I give him food, and other people give him food, because I don't see any manna. I don't see any supernatural demonstrations or any manifestations of a God, I see people, human hands, solving human problems, helping this poor man. So here's a man who is lame. Here's a man who is a double amputee. I have discussed this with many, many Christians, and I've asked them to come under the bridge and meet me, and I will take a video. Yes, I will. I would do it. I would be in wonder and awe and amazement, just like these people in the book of Acts did, of a sign, a wonder, a demonstration and manifestation of the supernatural into reality of a God. It never happens. Nobody's taken me up on the offer yet. And I wish they would. I would like to put this on video and let them try it. No one's taken me up on this for years now. It ain't probably going to happen. That's not good English, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. All right. So here we have, I close with this, very important chapter in the Gospel of John, one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. The entire religion and belief system of Christianity is based around this scripture and a few others. It's based on pure faith. Interesting to know 
that this story talks about Doubting Thomas, my favorite of all the disciples. He was the one that was the skeptic, the realist. He wanted to see a demonstration, a manifestation of a God in reality. He didn't believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. The other 11 said, Thomas, you missed out, dude. Jesus walked through the wall eight days ago, and he showed us his resurrected body. It is true, Thomas. It is true. You just got to believe us. That's what I get from Christians all the time. A lot of talk. I don't see any action. I don't see a demonstration. So the story goes on in chapter 20 of John that Thomas was there eight days later. Jesus knew this. So here Jesus comes through and he walks right through the door. A manifestation of supernaturalism, right? He walks through the door in his resurrected body. And he walked right up to Thomas. Now, let me tell you and read to you what Thomas said to the 11. Thomas said in John chapter 20, verse 25, unless I see his hands. Now, he's talking to the other dudes, the 11 disciples. Unless I see, not hear and talk, I want to see his hands, the imprint of the nails in his hand, and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. This is called reality. This is a real live human being using skepticism and critical thinking. I want to see. I'm tired of talk. I want to see some action here. Back this thing by some evidence and action. Story goes on. So interesting because Christian preachers, I used to do it too in the 70s and 80s, use this scripture and little do they know that this guy named Jesus actually gave this skeptic, Thomas, real live empirical evidence, a real manifestation of a God in reality. It wasn't just talk. It was a demonstration. Jesus walked in in verse 27, right through the walls, right up to Thomas, and he said, Thomas, reach here with your finger. See my hands? He wasn't just talking. He gave a demonstration. Reach here, put your hand in my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Instead of what I hear all the time, you got to believe, man. Look at the trees. Look at my personal life. They can't manifest it. It's talk, 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 and no action. So Jesus allegedly said to him, don't be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. In other words, Thomas conceded. Oh, you are God. You have risen from the dead. You walk right through the wall and I can see empirical evidence and a manifestation of something in reality. And here's the interesting thing that most Christian preachers miss over. And they skip because Jesus said to doubting Thomas, because you have seen. Yeah, Mr. Jesus, <laughs> this is how reality works. Yes, because we have seen, we believe. Because we require real life evidence and manifestations, that's what science does. In fact, yesterday out with believers, we had a guy that was pure anti-science. He said, there's no such thing as science. Truth is whatever you want it to be. That was an interesting talk with that guy. Because you've seen me, you believe. Bless it. Here's the thing that blows my mind. And this is what Christianity is built on. Pure faith. Forget about, forget about it. Forget about actually requiring evidence and a manifestation in reality. Forget about that, Jesus said. That's why you believe, Thomas, because you saw, <laughs> you saw some reality. He said, but blessed, happy to be envied are all those who do not see and yet believe. That doesn't make rational sense. That doesn't make logical sense. That is not how reality works. Reality is my buddy Thomas here. That's how reality works. A manifestation of a supernatural deity in reality not going to happen. I'm open. I tell believers all the time. And they tell me, and they ask me, David, what would it take for you to come back to Jesus and believe in God? And I tell them, how about some evidence? How about a manifestation of God? How about doing what this book told you to do in John chapter 14? Do greater works 
than what Jesus did. Jesus said you're supposed to not just talk, not just debate, not just try to drag me down a rabbit hole of Christian deep philosophy. Not for me. I want to see. And it hadn't happened yet. And I ain't shaking. I'm not afraid. <laughs> because I it, it's not going to happen. But if it does, sure, I'll believe anything to be true. But you have to manifest it into reality. So I would say, talk, 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 talk is cheap. Let's see some action. All right, thanks for watching The Preaching Humanists with David Oliverio. Have a wonderful day.